Seated. So leaning into Jesus. Um, it's a, it's a great theme for this weekend. And Pastor, uh, Brent and Nadia, thank you so much for hosting us to this weekend. We've loved being with you guys. And even though we've been a lot of flu around, how many of you have had flu the last few days? Uh, it's amazing. I mean, we, we just arrived back from Mozambique and while in Mozambique, we were already full of flu, came back here and we're just saying, Jesus, we need you. So we've been leaning into Jesus for health, <laughs> but we want to talk about how to lean into him with your whole life. Uh, the day, the, your best days are ahead of you. Why? Because He has foreordained and predestined your life. Uh, Ephesians 3 verse 20, God says that He's going to do immeasurably more than you could ever think, dream, or imagine according to His Spirit that is, in, is working within you. So which means God already has intentions of greatness for your life. Well, if that is true, we've got to learn how to lean. You want to know how to lean? Everybody to go this way. Let's lean. Let, let's lean. Let's lean. Let's lean. I want to see everybody leaning. All right. Let's do the other side. Okay, because you're going to see that sometimes we lean in the wrong way. So we're going to learn to lean in the right way. Everybody to their right. Okay. And uh, let's talk about seeking him first. Because that's really what Jesus is telling us in Matthew 6. He says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one or love the other. Or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You, and by the way, you can't lean both sides straight away. Same time. You've got to choose which way you're going to lean. And it says, you cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, everybody say, do not worry. It says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in the barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about, can you see it's all about worry? <laughs> why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is year to day, tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you of little faith? God is saying, come on, let's up the faith factor here. Let's up the faith quotient right here. He says, do not worry. But he said, do not worry. Come on, let's all say it together, do not worry. Because I know the fact that he says, do not worry, means he knows we worry. He says, do not worry what we shall eat or what we shall drink or what we shall wear, for the pagans run after these things. They pagans lean into those things. But your heavenly Father knows that you need Him. But, everybody say, but. Come on, talk, talk, turn to somebody's but and say, your but. No, no, sorry, that sounds bad. That doesn't sound right. Everybody say, but. He says, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And then all these things will be given to you as well. So what he's saying is, let's all lean in the same place. Come on, let's go to your right. Everybody lean into what's going to bring you a result. And he says, lean into his kingdom, lean into his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. In other words, don't lean into your worry. Don't lean into your pride or into your confusion. But he says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, some quick thoughts. Seeking God gives life. Leaning into God gives strength. Leaning into God helps to deliver us uh, from our troubles. Uh, helps to give us wisdom. Helps to help us to understand the things that we don't understand. And it says in Psalm 34 verse 4, I sought the Lord. Now watch this. I leaned into the Lord and He answered me. I sought the Lord. He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Now, just that verse in itself tells you exactly how to engage in a better marriage, how to get into a better uh, a life. God gives wisdom and discernment to those who seek Him. Seeking God brings hope. Leaning into God will cause you to lack no good thing. Psalm 34 verse 10 says, The, lion may, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. In other words, those who seek, those who lean into Jesus are satisfied. It's a very easy gospel message. If you just lean into him, if you just ask him, and you'll see just now, if you just touch him, if you just make him the, the main thing, being the main thing, then you will live a satisfied life. To seek means to pursue. And if you're going to lean into him, it means that you're going to want to pursue him, you want to confirm, you want to explore, you want to search. There's an active participation from your side. You're here to find out for yourself. Let me say this. You need to lean in yourself. You need to seek yourself. You need to pursue yourself. You need to make it. You, you know why you need it to do yourself? Because, because you can't live off somebody else's experience. 
You, you, know, you can't have a wife. You can't say, well, my wife, she loves to seek the Lord. She presses into Jesus, and she's a prayer warrior. She prays for me. She prays for my family. She prays for everybody. Man, she's amazing. Now, that's okay to say that, but you need to be a prayer warrior. You need to be a seeker. You need to be a follower of Jesus. You know why? Because you need your own experience with Jesus. The book of Revelation says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. In other words, what Jesus has done. And the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto death. But the word of their testimony. In other words, what is the testimony? The testimony is I have got an experience of God's divine intervention on my behalf in through and through my life, which has given me a, a testimony, a witness to say, look what the Lord has done in my life. I have personally experienced God answer prayers. I have personally experienced His divine nature in my life. I have personally experienced His transformation power. I have personally experienced His healing. How many of you need to lean into that? Because you need to search, you need to pursue, you need to desire intimacy with him for yourself because God wants you to find out for yourself. And I'll give you an example. The woman is, the Samaritan woman sitting at the well and Jesus goes up to her and uh, he begins to, to speak to her. Now she's a person who's had multiple husbands, living with the one she's now. She's, she's, uh, she's quite a wild woman, right? And Jesus goes and he speaks to her and he talks to her. And uh, he encounters her, and then what does he say to her? He says, if you lean into me, in other words, if you come drink from me, everything will be different. He doesn't say, go and get yourself another husband, that's what you need. He doesn't say to you, you need another relationship, or you need another town to live in. He says, no, no, you, you need to come to me. You need to come to me because I've got something for you. And she has a divine revelation. She gets her own experience of Jesus. By leaning into Jesus, she has a massive encounter with him. The Bible then says that she runs off and goes to the village. She tells everybody in the village what Jesus has done for her. This encounter that she has had with Jesus. And because she leaned into, leaned into Jesus, she's got a witness and a testimony. The Bible then says they run and they go and want to meet this Jesus. That's impacted this woman who had her own encounter with Jesus. They go to find out more about this Jesus. And it says this in John 4. They said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. But now we have heard for ourselves. We, we, are, we have leaned into Jesus for the last few days. We've leaned into him. We've, we've pressed into him. We've pursued him. We've asked him questions. We've, we've, we've said, Jesus, we, we want to know for ourselves. You need to know for yourself what God has for you. And they say, we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Can you see why you need to lean into him? Because you need your own encounter. You need your own experience. You need to find out for yourself. Just like these village people, she had an encounter. She told them about it. They came running because of her testimony, but they then needed to have their own testimony. And uh, because they had to find out for themselves, they had to come to an understanding, they had to become, they had to confirm, they had to establish. And so it is so important. And why do we seek him? Well, we seek him because we want to know his will and plans and purposes. You know, if God says, I know the plan. In fact, let me just read Jeremiah 29 quickly for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. We all know this one. And it says this. There's no scripture on the board, so don't worry. It says, for I know the plans, God says, I have for you, declares the Lord. God says, I know the plans. I know what you need. I know what's going to make a difference in your life. I know what's going to make a better marriage in your life. I know how you can have a successful business. I know how you can overcome. I know how you can be healed. I know how you can be restored, how you can be made whole. He said, I know the plans I have for you. And he says, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Then, watch this. You will call on me, and you will come, and you will pray to me, and I will listen to you. And then it says in verse 13, you will seek me, and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. I, God says, will be found by you, <laughs> declares the Lord, and, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you. Can you see this? God says, you need to have your own experience with me. You need your own encounter with me. You can't live off somebody else's testimony. Come on, somebody say it's true. You need to know him for yourself because he has a plan and he has a purpose and he has a will for your life. He says, I know the plans I have for you, sir. So God is saying to you, he's been wanting to talk to you and lead you and guide you. He's going to show you things in this week you've never thought possible before. Your life is going to go to a whole new level because suddenly you're going to realize and understand the depth of intimacy that he wants with you. No longer somebody else's relationship, but your relationship with him. 
It's going to go a whole new depth of intimacy that's going to blow your mind. He's going to show you the immeasurably more that you could ever think, dream, or imagine. Because God is at work and he's got things for you. And it says this, it says, we seek his kingdom for participation, for mobilization, and for change. The reason why you seek him, the reason why you desire him, the reason why you pursue him, the reason why you run after him, because you don't want your life to be the same. I don't want to be the same as I was yesterday. I, don't, I want my life today to be different to what it was yesterday. And I want tomorrow to be different to what I am today. I don't want to be the same person as I was 10 years ago. My wife says, amen. Is it a true? We're on a journey of transformation and change. So when we seek him, when we lean in, come everybody lean a bit. Come on, I know it's the third service here. You've had your breakfast. You, you had a last sleep, long sleep. But it's, it's for participation. It's for mobilization. It's for change. I don't seek him for information. I seek him for change. I seek him for relationship. I seek him for intimacy. I seek him for understanding. And then we seek his interests. The reason why you lean into him is because you want to know what he is interested in and what he wants and what he desires for your life. Whatever you seek, you will find. You know what? If, you, if you're looking for trouble, you will find trouble. How many of you know that? Uh, Proverbs says this, the fool's lips invites a beating. It's amazing. If you're looking for trouble, you'll find it. I say to the young guys, if you keep looking at that girl down the road over there, before you know it, you'll be there. Where you look is where you stand. What you lean into is, is the fruit of what you'll get. So if you lean into your own understanding, all you'll ever get is your understand, understanding. If you lean into your own wisdom, you'll, all you'll ever have is your own wisdom. But if you lead into his wisdom, that's why the, the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him come and ask of the Father. Because he's the ultimate source. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So whatever you seek, you will find. How many of you uh, know that Jesus said, I've come to seek and save the lost? Okay, how many of you have been saved by Jesus? Can I just see a show of hands? Three people. So you've been saved by Jesus. Aren't you glad that he found what he was looking for? You are a testimony that you have been found by Jesus, that he fulfills what he says he will do. So if he seeks, comes to seek and save, and the fact that you are saved means that his seeking has produced a result. So if Jesus has to seek and lean into and pursue and go and find and discover, how much more should we? Jesus expects his seeking to produce an outcome. And when it comes to seeking first his kingdom in Matthew 7, it says, ask. Watch this. This is brilliant. Ask, and it will not be given to you. Seek, and you will never find. Knock, and the door never gets open to you. No, it's not true. Listen to what it says. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will. Knock, and the door will be. For everyone who asks, and the one who seeks, and the one who knocks, How's that? Just that mess, that verse in itself should be enough for you to sustain yourself for the next 10 years. You just got to lean in. You just got to knock. You just got to ask. You got to seek. You got to pursue. Because if you're searching for the right pla- in the right place, it means that you're looking for the source. See, if you're looking for wisdom, go to the source. If you're looking for, for, if, for knowledge or understanding, go to the source. If you're looking for healing, go to the source. How many of you, let me ask you, sir, where's the source of the Nile? The Mediterranean. Okay, um, Egypt? No. What's the, where, does the, where does the Nile River begin? There we go. It's in Jinja, in Uganda. Anybody from Uganda here? Nobody. Well, listen, on behalf of the Ugandans, and let's be the Egyptians here today, let's thank the Ugandans for the source of the Nile. Can we put our hands together? Thank you to Uganda. You see, all of us know where the Nile ends up. We know where, the, where a lot of the, the, the manifestation of the Nile is, but actually the source is Uganda. I've stood right there in Jinja, right at the source. This is where the Nile begins. Isn't that amazing? You never knew that. How many of you did not know that? Fantastic, at least I'm teaching something that you don't know. (laughs) But let me say this, is if you want to know, not just the fruit of things, but you want to know what causes that fruit, go to the source. And in Matthew chapter 11, it says, come to me, Jesus said, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. How many of you want some rest? Okay, what if you want rest? Go to the source. Who's the source? What's the source? Jesus is the source. 
Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now the problem is, the reason why we don't go to God first is because our first and God's first is often different. We've got to get the, this priority line right. And that is like what his first has got to become my first. Because sometimes he's our second. He's our emergency relief. He's our repair workshop. He's our, our just go to when I'm in trouble guy. He's not the first port of call. And, uh, and so God's first needs to become your first. And during, you know, sometimes during the reading of my, the Bible, I've been challenged in my thinking by what it says. So many times, God, what God says seems to fly in the face of what we say and do. In Matthew 19, it says, How many who push themselves to be first will find themselves last? Those who are willing to be last find themselves to be first. In Matthew 20, 16, it says, Now you can understand what it meant, what I meant when I said that the first will end up last and the last will end up being first. Everyone is invited, but few are chosen. Philippians, Paul says, be free from prideful opinions, for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your hearts, but in authentic humility, put others first and, others, and view others as more important than yourself. And so we've got to understand, and that's what Jesus was keep saying, just kind of show them what God's first is. And uh, in other words, when we make things first that is God's first, we will get God's results. And uh, so let's look at God's first. In Psalm 41, it says, God always blesses those who are kind to the poor and the helpless. They are the first ones God helps when they find themselves in trouble. Can you see? God has a different first. He says, if you, go, if you, if you bless and you go and help the poor and the helpless, well, they're the first one that God helps when they find themselves in trouble. So if you want to be saved when you're in trouble, be a kind of person that's been doing the first thing first. And it says in Proverbs 24, go ahead, build your career, give yourself to your work. And, and there's nothing wrong with work. There's nothing wrong with building careers. There's nothing wrong with, with having the nice things in life. But if you put me first, look at what it says there. If you put me first, you'll see your family built up. That is a great portion of scripture. If you put, if you put the first things first that God says needs to be first, then you will get his results. And so how do we put God first in our lives? Well. Maybe it's because my cannot is God's can. Uh, a lot of times why we don't put things first because we just don't think that something good will come out of it. And we think we can't do it and it's not worth attempting that. And so, Because so, many times when we're leaning to God, we're leaning into a need to, for a miraculous intervention. We need to exercise faith. We need to believe for things that seem impossible. And we think this cannot be done, so we don't lean into Him. But actually, it's because we don't really believe that God can. And so... Jesus has to be your first call. Um, in Mark chapter 1, verse 30, it's Simon's mother-in-law. She was bedridden. She was sick with a high fever. And the Bible says the first thing that they did was to tell Jesus about her. Let's just put that quickly on there. It says Simon's mother-in-law was bedridden, sick with a high fever. So the last thing they did, after being everywhere else, tried everything, drank every health tablet, did all the medicinal checks, uh, spoke to everybody, got all the housewife uh, medicines, all the different remedies. And then they said, what else can we do? And they said, oh, let's go to Jesus. Ah, oh, let's go to Jesus. Because, I mean, he's the only one that can ultimately fix this. No, it says that they, the first thing they did was to tell Jesus about her. So learn to be a people that know how to lean in. Come on, let's just lean in a bit. You know, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to lean into his word. I want to lean into what he thinks. I want to lean into his plans. I want to pursue his purposes. I want to lean into understanding what he wants, what he values. Because what you value, what you admire, what you esteem, and what you trust will be your first port of call. That's the bottom line. And, uh, and some of you, you know, some people just think, well, I'll just wait until it's the right time. But uh, I believe, as Luke chapter 11 says, in terms of how we go forward. He says, you Pharisees are hopeless frauds, for you're obsessed with peripheral issues. Look at that word, you're obsessed, in Luke chapter 11, right at the end. It says, you Pharisees are hopeless frauds, for you're obsessed. In other words, you've, made, you've been leaning into that. You've made that your mindset. You've filled your mind with that. You have, you have, you, you've occupied yourself with these thoughts. 
you are obsessed with peripheral issues like paying ridiculous tithes on the smallest herbs that grow in your gardens. These matters you should do. Yet when you unjustly cheat others, you ignore the most important duty of all, to walk in the love of God. And then he says this, readjust your values and place first things first. Can you see that? Readjust. Position yourself. Pursue the, the things that should be pursued. And, and I think Nicodemus had it, had it wrong, and Jesus was correcting him. He's, he comes to Jesus at night. He's a religious leader, and he sees all the things that Jesus does. And he wants what Jesus does, and he, 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 he admires that, but he forgets what the first thing is and what the most important thing is in life. And Jesus says to him this in John 3, Nicodemus, listen to this eternal truth. Before a person can perceive God's kingdom realm, they must first experience a rebirth. Before, you've you, you got to get to a place of where he is my first port of call. He is the place that I lean into. He is the one that I pursue. He is the one that I make number one. Not he's at the end of it all. He's the backstop. He's the one that I, he's my halfway house. He's, he's my, he's my you know, fueling station. Sunday I, I get fueled up and I feel good for the week. He is my everything. He is my life. He is the one. And, and the question is, at which stage? Because it says here, that, that scripture we read earlier on, it says, uh, it says, um, let me go and find it here quickly somewhere else. It says here, sorry, I just, it's gone. Um, yeah, it says, readjust your values and place first things first. In other words, you need to take responsibility for what you're thinking, where you find yourself, and how you're positioning yourself. So he's saying, hang on, if you're in the wrong position, if you're in the wrong thoughts, and you, and you, and you have the wrong focus, make the decision today. Readjust, reevaluate, recalibrate today. And, and so the question is, when is the time? Well, I was watching a documentary of a Sherpa. Uh, it's on Netflix. And this Sherpa has climbed Mount Everest more than anybody else, right to the summit many times. And in this documentary, there was a young boy who was running along a pathway, running along this pathway in the Himalayas in Nepal, beautiful. And he comes across an old lady sitting uh, in, in the entrance of a stone house, an old house, old lady. They've both been there for over hundreds of years. And uh, this boy then asks her the most silly thing. He says, what's the time? And she clearly has no watch on her. And she looks up. And she looks at him and she says, the time is now. And it just spoke to me. And I realized that the time to lean into Jesus, the time to recalibrate, the time to make the right choices, the time to get things in its right order is now. Not like one day I'll have this devotional life, one day I'll, be, I'll give myself to Jesus, one day I'll serve Him with all my heart. All right, no, no, no. It's, it's a, before everything else. Don't worry about what you shall eat or what you shall drink, the clothes you shall wear, the food you will. Don't worry about those things. The pagans run after those things. No, no, seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, and then all those things. The time is now. Jesus said, readjust your values and place first things first. Somebody once said, God is not a resource, he is the source. And so if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want hope, purpose, understanding, fulfillment, testimonies, breakthrough, great marriage, great business, go to the source. Come unto me, Jesus said. In fact, you know what Jesus said to the disciples? He walked past them and he said, come, follow me. I'll make you. I'll make you. I will show you the life that could be and should be. And as we close tonight, this morning, this afternoon, wherever we are, there we go, almost lunchtime. As we come to an end, is there a recalibration that is needed? Is there a readjustment? Is there a repositioning? Is there a, re a renewed thinking that is needed? Because as a man thinks, so he is. Why don't we just close our eyes and bow our heads for a minute and just allow the Lord to speak to you. And You know, maybe you've been living off the testimonies of other people. Maybe you've been living off your spouse's testimony or something that happened in your life years ago. But what's the testimony of your life today? 
what's the fruit of your life today? What's the outcome? And what's, what's the fulfillment of this amazing, immeasurably more potential of your life? What's the witness you have now? You know how good God has been in the past, but how good is God to you today? And how has his goodness been revealed in and through your life? Why don't you just lean into Jesus today? Pursue him today and come to him. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says that he, he says that he stands at the door of our heart and knocks. And if we open up, he says, I'll come in. That's the graciousness of God. That he actually pursues us. He goes to seek and save that which is lost. He finds the lost sheep. And that's the most amazing picture of grace and love. That God loves you too much to leave you where you are. That he comes to you where you are to take you to where you should be. That's how intentional he is. Would you be intentional today? Just to lean into his arms. Lean into his love. Lean into his grace and his forgiveness and his mercy. And watch your life change. Speak to him. My sheep hear my voice, Jesus said, and they follow me. Won't you follow him today? In Jesus' name. Amen.